Elon Musk may have finally managed to kill Twitter. If you're unverified, meaning you don't have the blue check mark and you haven't paid the eight bucks chuck tax per month, then you are limited to 600 tweets per day. That's what you see. Then you will have a rate limit, meaning that you cannot see more tweets. And 600 tweets is not that much if you consider that uh, it's all those things you skip over. You're checking some thread and there are a lot of small comments. All those account. So 600 tweets, if you want to use the core product, sounds a bit silly. Users are penalized for using the product. And the core product is about reading the tweets and also it's a advertising business he's supposed to serve ads for the users in order to get views and uh, now there's a limit which also reduces the amount of views impressions for the ads I'm not sure what to think of this. Uh, the easiest explanation is that he's running out of money and he needs to limit uh, the expenses. And uh, views are ex expenses. Uh, you have to serve them. And uh, this way, uh, blaming the uh, AI scraping, uh, which is not really any news, there's always been web scraping doesn't sound uh, plausible explanation oh I think this is absolutely about AI scraping I think he wants to preser preserve that data for his own AI company that he's building and he doesn't want it lifted by open AI and by other crawlers I think that's exactly what's going on so not an accident he'll change the limit as needed that could be the case but um, I don't think that's the most uh, uh, easiest answer here, because Twitter also uh, limited uh, the access to to the tweets if you're not logged in. And this theory in this tweet says that uh, Twitter started to DDoSing itself uh, because some kind of a bug. So uh, this would explain why even the rate limit was put in place hastily and also uh, increased just a matter of a few hours later on. So it was not like uh, it was anticipated event, like if you, well, he already uh, limited access to the API earlier on, that was already expected uh, behavior. This seems like a rush and uh, a quick thing. Yeah, the 1st of July is something as well, which could also affect this, but uh, well, these are the theories I've, I found out. Obviously, limiting the login requirement uh, also limits the scraping. So, yeah. Well, obviously, you would really limit accounts uh, that are not logged in or prevent them from even seeing the site if you're worried about AI scraping you. So I think that's all logical and consistent. And for all the hatred that's flying around on Twitter, there's just a whole bunch of people who hate Elon and will automatically attack and call him a moron and try to make it sound like the worst thing possible. Yeah, there are probably some unanticipated uh, consequences of doing the rate limiting. They probably had to implement it in a hurry because they probably saw AI bots just going for it. And once the data is gone, it's gone forever. And now they kind of have to clean up their other processes that are relying on that, which I'm sure they will. It's not rocket science. But I think all these people rooting for the downfall of Twitter are just the people who were demanding censorship and were annoyed that Elon opened it up to free speech. If anything, I think, you know, I'm not a big Twitter user these days, but from afar, it seems to be doing reasonably well, maybe even better than ever. And of course, the previews are also gone now from AirChat. So here's a picture of the tweet. Yeah, I saw that announcement today too. I also saw one immediately, <laughs> basically, from Elon Musk saying that rate limit is going to go up. I don't understand the reasons exactly why this is happening, but Whatever the case, I think that he's going to change it. Uh, this is him, you know, marketing, whatever you call it, uh, in order to generate a bit of buzz. He's, he's very good at this. It's a form of trolling, I think. Maybe there's an important reason behind it. Maybe not. Uh, but I wouldn't be overly concerned at this point. And also, he says that it's about... Um, 
reading posts. Now, what constitutes reading a post? Is a post absolutely identical to a tweet? I don't know. Is he talking about that long-form thing where you can write whatever it is now, 25,000 characters or something or other? You can include video and all that sort of stuff. Is a regular tweet a post? And is scrolling past one, does that constitute reading? Do you have to pause on the tweet for a certain amount of time? Does that constitute reading? It's a bit slippery. He hasn't defined his terms there, so I don't know. Then again, I'm not an expert in any of this stuff, but I just wonder. I just can't imagine until we start getting reports of people saying, hey, I'm an unverified account and I can't read any more tweets, that this is a problem. Maybe it is. I'm speaking from a place of ignorance. Yeah, I agree with everything you're saying there. You know, it it seems to be haphazard, uh, going off half-cocked, all that sort of stuff. But um, let's put the optimistic spin on it. It's just iteration, right? He's checking stuff out. He's experimenting. Hey, more power to him to do that stuff. And in the meantime, people go, oh, you're ruining Twitter. Twitter's, you know, falling apart and everything else. And he's sitting back going, look, this is just temporary. Don't worry about it. In his mind, he's just thinking that people can yell and scream all their life. He's, he's, he seems to be completely immune to that in some situations. Couldn't give a damn about what people are saying, the noise, the bars. He ignores it all, just plows on through trying stuff. And, hey, if it goes bad, then he just changes it back. He reverts back. He tries something new, tries something different. So I think that might be what going what's going on. People don't like it. They're very protective of Twitter. They don't want their platform to be experimented with, and so they're going to just say how awful it is and how the, that this is the end. <laughs> how many times ever since... Ever since Musk took over the place, how many times have we heard, well, that's it, that's the end of Twitter, Twitter is just, you know, going the way of the dinosaur, the whole place is ruined, I'm leaving Twitter, that's it, you know, everyone has to announce you know, when they're leaving Twitter, no one does, the place seems to go from strength to strength, so I am not at all that worried, I'm sort of looking at this just as a, you know, the, that old meme, the person with the popcorn just eating eating the popcorn while, you know, the, the, the people on the side of Musk are saying, yay, go Elon, do this thing, and then the people on the other side saying, that's it, I'm leaving Twitter, it's all gone uh, terribly, there's all this hate speech out there. Uh, but more power to him to try different stuff, I don't know. I'm not aware, I don't think many of us are aware unless you're inside Twitter of, uh, as to what exactly is going on. Uh, I, it seems to me... He often knows what he's doing better than the people who are outside the company and he's playing a game. I mean, if anyone in the world can be said to be playing 4D chess, it's the world's richest man who is out there actually building rockets and and going places. So he, he knows what he's doing. The rate limit was very real, at least in my case. Uh, I couldn't see even, even on my own tweets. Um, what I noticed is that you could, uh, if you had a logged in session from some other device or browser, uh, it didn't apply to that one. So you could, if you were logged in with multiple devices, then you would effectively reset the, um, the limit. But nevertheless, it prevented you from using Twitter. I agree. He's really good at playing games. Uh, if you remember the CEO uh, appointment, he already knew that beforehand and he was playing these balls that should I resign? What should I do? And almost all of those occasions where he's asking something, he already knows the answer or he's already decided something and he's just playing the game. In this case, I think it may have been that there was some fault in the systems and uh, he just spinned it this way because it was evident that uh, things are not uh, going to blow up. So he needed to respond it some way. And why just say that, hey, we failed with something? Better to spin it in some fancy way and make it to uh, whatever marketing event uh, because it's going to happen anyways. And he just wants to have a little bit of fun, like you described, and he's already now shuffling it. Uh, Maybe it's already a third time he's been changing the limit. It was a known fact that uh, he was not paying for the cloud services and Google was the one I think he cancelled and it took effect uh, 1st of July. And uh, so in that sense, if there's a lot of uh, services in the backend which are dropping off and this is starting to cause issues, uh, it was a known thing. He was trying to ramp up the alternative services, but uh, it wasn't fast enough. So in a way, this is... uh, passing event 
nevertheless, uh, one of these whales, which we don't ever see anymore in the Twitter, but, uh, uh, well, stuff breakdowns at times. But the biggest thing is that uh, there's no really place to go. And this was once again uh, another attempt for a lot of people to try to go to Mastodon. Uh, some of them went to T2, Blue Sky. People are scattered around. But there's not enough impact, uh, a network effect to go one place. And uh, this is uh, quite unfortunate uh, because uh, oh, you have to be in all of them pretty much because uh, some people just choose one place and others the other place. And... Uh, now you don't have a uni unified place to, to get anything. This is a very interesting take about how uh, Musk has either inadvertently or purposely basically cut off the uh, censorship uh, industry by cutting off their access. Um, so worth the listen. I think it's like uh, eight minutes uh, worth listening to it all because it's all highly interesting. This is great. Um, but I think the unfortunate reality is that most of the value from Twitter comes that it's uh, fully public and the de facto broadcast medium for the internet. And I think the thing that I'm afraid of is that by locking it down, um, it's basically ruining the reason that people use Twitter. I think that people think that Twitter could also be for conversations and with paywalls and closed off that People still come there for these conversations. And, you know, I, I find that suspect because, you know, there's platforms like AirChat, which are far better for conversations. Um, and Twitter's highly geared towards broadcasts and making you famous um, for that one tweet where it's totally innocuous, but uh, it gets put on CNN. So I, I'm not sure how the platform will evolve as a function of these changes. Um, I think it's great that. Uh, they're going to put the death knell on the the censorship death star, if you will. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, it seems complicated. Exactly. It's uh, it's not Twitter's content per se. It's the user's content who's been generating it. And uh, unfortunately, uh, still today, Twitter daily users, uh, user hours are 40 million. And top 25 news sites in the world aggregated daily use hours are 15 million. So uh, it tells where are the news. Well, they are still in the Twitter, and the Twitter is basically originating the news for those uh, top uh, 25 news sites in um, often times as well. So in that sense, if uh, Twitter goes down, a lot of the news go down as well. I really think this is short term. As a matter of fact, on the other side of this, I think 99% of the people that contribute to Twitter are coming back and uh, probably at least 10 or 20% of the bots that make Twitter crappy are not coming back. I think it's a brush off the rapid polls. And the optics are there for scraping and that's the reason to do it. But I'm sure he was just thinking, sitting around, I was like, wait a minute, if I turn off the scraping, all these damn bots that are constantly like bugging all the people I'm actually here to serve are going to have massive problems and we'll just see what they do. Remember, it's a privately held company right now. He doesn't, it's actually of no benefit to him other than fluffing certain metrics that frankly, have been fluffed for a long time and therefore served the business poorly because there's no real feedback mechanism to how many views they're getting. So it's a privately held company anymore. MAUs, DAUs, doesn't really matter unless they're kind of either they're bringing value in content or bringing value um, in consumption. And all the bots and rapid buyers and the people that keep coming back to the well just try and scan like thousands of things. Um, yeah, that those aren't profitable things to concentrate on, much like not so much with AirChat, but like if it's only about listeners, how do we navigate so we can repeatedly get back to where we were listening only for weeks on end? Uh, I'm not sure that, you know, end customer, that cohort is actually long term what makes the platform like a wonderful place for sparkling conversation. I mean, this is my bread and butter. Of course, the customer is very important, but there's lots of people that are in your vision and in your workspace and in your path of existence that actually aren't your customers that person that's merely reading twitter and doing nothing and scraping a thousand what are they doing for your business they're not your customer good marketing good business is saying fuck yeah to great customers and i don't care about the other customers in fact some customers on outright need to be driven out for the business to succeed 
which is why there is this constant like jokey griping about customers in every profession, including the restaurant business. And it's not about all the customers. It's just like, it's actually about, you know, the customers that are assholes that should be dunked on, right? Like just, it is what it is. That's how it happens, you know? Um, so those aren't mutually exclusive. You can exclusively serve the customer and then look at another potential customer. That's not a real customer at all. I mean, just doesn't add or contribute anything to your business model. So within the confines of propriety and serving your real customers, you got to get rid of the lousy ones. So you rate limit them. Bye. You want to leave? Fine. Bye. Uh, this uh, Douglas Hofstede interview is quite revealing and uh, I don't know what's the best word for it. Uh, I would say puzzled, puzzling, confused, confusing, confusing, 